Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So intrinsic pathway is also known as mitochondrial pathway because it involves mitochondria. Now this is one type of apoptosis. So internal stimuli such as irreparable genetic damage that means when some genetic damages occur inside the cell that cannot be corrected or when there is the lack of oxygen that the situation is called hypoxia or extremely high concentrations of cytosolic calcium or viral infection or severe oxidative damage that means when the production of large number of destructive free radicals are there in the cytosol so these events are some internal stimuli which trigger apoptosis now we will talk about the mechanism how intrinsic apoptosis occurs so when some internal cellular damage occurs inside the cell, they activate the pro-apoptotic BCL2 family members. The examples are bad or Bax proteins. These are some proteins who are in the family of BCL2. Now they are pro-apoptotic proteins. So these proteins are found in the inactivate state inside the cell when there is no need of them. But when there is some type of cellular damages that time these proteins are getting activated via those damages. So they are called pro-apoptotic factors because they mediate apoptosis now when they are activated they are getting inserted into outer mitochondrial membrane so we can see this is the outer mitochondrial membrane where these bags are inserted and what they do they will make the pore in the outer membrane so in the outer membrane some pores will be formed once the pores are formed in the outer membrane cytochrome c molecules will be released in the cytosol from the intermembrane space so this is the intermembrane space because this is present between outer membrane and inner membrane so from this intermembrane space some cytochrome c molecules will be released in the cytosol so once these cytochrome c molecules are released in the cytosol what they will do they will bind to apof1 this is one more protein and procaspase 9 procaspase 9 is another protein that is the protease that can cleave proteins it can cleave other proteins and this complex is called apoptosome so apoptosome complex is formed in the cytosol where apof1 cytochrome c and procaspase 9 is there once the apoptosome complex is formed procaspase 9 is now activated because when it was in procaspase form it was in the inactivated form when it is now there in the apoptosome complex it is getting activated it will become caspase 9 which is an initiator caspase so we know that caspase is the protease and initiator caspase because it initiates the breakdown of other proteins once caspase 9 is activated 
it binds to caspase 3 so this is caspase 3 so it binds to caspase 3 and caspase 3 is the executioner caspase so once caspase 9 binds to caspase 3 that is the executioner caspase this executioner caspase or caspase 3 is getting activated and this caspase will ultimately break down number of proteins in the cell and will continue apoptosis.